Hello, OHS. This is Mr. Briggs. I um, wanted to do a quick video about the difference between student or uh, scholarships, grants, and student loans. So, yeah, scholarships, grants. Okay. So, um, Oops, here we go. Okay. So these are the three main types of financial aid for school. Okay. There we go. Okay. Um, so scholarships. Essentially it's free money. You apply. Um, they don't need to be paid back. There are usually no rules to a scholarship. Okay, so with scholarships, once you get the money, you have the money. Um, the schools or scholarship foundation, sometimes they have a rule or they have a thing where you need to reapply every year. Um, that's not a rule. It's just how that scholarship works. So you can go online, like you can read the scholarship either online or uh, paper format. And that is how you'll, you'll know how that works. The money is sometimes sent to you. Or directly to the school to pay for your school stuff. Okay, so that's the main thing. Um, you can actually, I usually, when I was doing scholarships, I went to uh, lastweb.com. Um, that's, that's a good place. And then you can also just Google, Google them. Um, when you apply for scholarships and grants, uh, look for uh, scholarships about about you and your interests. So, um, what I was told my college students, because uh, I worked in college admissions for three years. What I always told them is look for scholarships that are, or subjects that are about you. So there are scholarships out there for just about everything and every interest that you could possibly think of. So like there are scholarships for tall people, for short people, for super skinny people, for not so skinny people. There are scholarships for people with beards, with long hair, short hair. Um, there are also scholarships for I like cars, I like motorcycles, I like digging ditches, I like planting trees, I like the environment, I'm interested in business, I have a small business that I've started. You know, I'm going to school for agriculture, I'm going to school for teaching, you know, there are scholarships for just about everything you can think of. It's just a matter of searching for it, okay? So, for example, um, let's see here. Scholarships for tall people. Here we go. Scholarship awards for tall students. See, told you. Tall people. Uh, scholarships for uh, agriculture students. Scholarship award program for agriculture students. Okay, so you can just anything you can think of. Um, and then also look for scholarships for the specific schools you're looking into. So that's scholarships in a nutshell. You don't need to pay them back. It's essentially free money. So what a, a lot of people will do, what I did was um, you can spend your summer or a couple of summers and for a job just filling out applications for scholarships and grants. Okay. That's the gist of it. Okay. Grants. 
So you have to apply for grants. There are rules for grants. Um, if you don't follow the rules, uh, you have to pay the grant back. So, for example, if there is a grant, or the, the requirements for grants are usually a bit more strict and require a bit more of you uh, than scholarships. Scholarships, a lot of times it's, you, know, you fill out some questions about yourself, and then they want an essay, usually it's like an essay, like 250 words, or, you know, 500 word essay, or something like that. Um, for grants, you usually need to provide official paperwork like a transcript or uh, letters of recommendation, um, enrollment verification forms for your college that you're looking into. But there are um, there are school specific grants. Look for grants about you and your interests. Um, and you can do that all on Google. Um, they are out there. So they're usually a little bit more specific. And there aren't quite as many grant options out there, but there are grants for a lot of different things. Okay. Um, grants are really nice because it's usually a more consistent uh, source of funding. Um, you know, there's. there's Federal grants for school. Okay. Grants are nice as long as you follow the rules, it's yours, kind of a thing. It, and it usually goes, actually, it usually goes to the school. So the money usually goes directly to the school. All right. Loans. Personally, these are my least favorite. However, in a lot of situations, it's necessary. Okay. So, uh, with loans, you apply, follow the rules of the loan, uh, need to be paid back. Okay. Um, a loan for school is just like a loan for a house or a car. It's kind of like a credit card. Um, the thing about school loans is um, you cannot file for bank to make loan to make student loans. So um, as you may or may not know, when you file for bankruptcy, that basically says, uh, and it's different for each person in circumstance and amount and type of loans and stuff, but filing for bankruptcy basically says there's no way I can pay my debts back. Sometimes um, company, uh, sometimes the bankruptcy court, they'll garnish your wages, which means it takes like your money as you get paid from your job. It takes money from that to start paying some of your debts. It usually knocks a lot of your debt out for you, but it's usually not 100%. Um, another thing with loans to keep in mind is there's an interest rate. Um, so if you're not aware, interest is essentially money on top of what you borrow. So for example, if you take out a student loan for $50,000, okay, you may have a student loan for, there are a bunch of different types of student loans and different interest rates and different um, types of interest. So you can have a variable rate where one year it might be 3%. So, um, you know, 3% of $50,000 is another $1,500. 
sometimes it it adds over time. So your first year, your student loan may only be fifty thousand, but your second, you know, you've accrued fifteen hundred dollars worth of interest, which then is on top of you know your second year. This is what you're gonna owe your second year, your third year, you know, uh, let's see, third year it's another fifteen hundred dollars. And it just keeps going up as time goes on, how much you owe. Now, obviously, with a loan, you're paying some of it off. So um, over time, so this, you know, it may, your interest or your, your total will go down eventually, but it doesn't go down super quickly. But the tricky thing is with a variable interest rate loan, one year you may be at 3%, one year you may be at 12%. So... $50,000 times, uh, times 12%, 6,000. So your interest rate, instead of being $1,500 a year, it might bump up to $6,000 a year, which gets crazy. I've seen student loans up to 20% interest rate. Okay. Um, or you can have a fixed rate, which means it does not change over time. Usually those are a little bit higher than some of those variable rates. they're higher than those variable rates. So with a variable rate at a $50,000 student loan, variable rate, one year you might have 3%, next year you may have 10%, you may have 12%, you may have 23%, which I've seen. But with a fixed rate, you are locked in at a certain rate. So like for me, for example, my student loans are locked in forever at an interest rate of 7%, or actually I think it's almost 8%, but 7%. So I'm always accruing this much interest. Okay. Now, you have to keep in mind that with a loan, you have interest rates. Okay. Now, with student loans, usually you don't have to pay them back while you're in school. So you have in school deferment. This just means payments are put on pause. However, you are still getting your interest. Okay. Um, payments on pause but still gaining interest. Okay. You could also be in forbearance, which is a very similar situation, but that's when you're not in school. Uh, oh, I got that. Uh, in forbearance, payments on pause, but still gaining interest. Okay. Um, so there's that. Another thing that you might have is um, deferment uh, default. This is a really bad thing to be in. So default is when you have uh, a student loan or just quite frankly, any loan that you are not paying on, you cannot pay on, um, but you're supposed to be paying on it. What happens with this is it affects your taxes. You have, um, let's see, it's a, uh, they can take money out of your taxes or add more in your taxes. They can take away your income. You can go to collections, which really hurts your credit and it hits you really hard. So that's not a good thing. If you don't want that. So these are kind of the three main types of student loan or financial aid. Now there are, you can go with loans, you can go uh, to state level. You can have federal student loans. You can also go with private student loans, which this is usually like through a bank or credit union. And these are these are generally a higher interest rate. Um, personally, I have some federal student loans. I'm not a fan of them, but they're there. Um, with loan programs, however, sometimes there are forgiveness programs. Depending, oops, what did I miss? Oh. Okay. The tricky thing about forgiveness programs is they vary from loan to loan and there are requirements. For them. So for example, I'm in a program or I have a program. Um, I'm in, I have my loans through FedLoan. Okay. 
because I have a federal student loan. Okay. So they have programs. Uh, Fed loan, for example, has a program where if you are, um, like for mine, I'm considered a, a state employee or employee of the state. Through So I have the public works pro, uh, forgiveness program. Okay, so public works forgiveness program for mine, I have to make 100, wait a minute, oh, it's 120 qualifying payments, while employed by the state or in this position, and those loans can be forgiven. Anything after those 120 payments, the entire lump sum is gone. Okay. Now, that's just my Fed loan, the one that I have, Mr. Briggs has. Okay. There are different loans with different programs, um, and it varies from person to person, state to state, school to school, loan to loan, okay, program to program. Um, so there are programs out there, but you do have to you know, do your research. I recommend doing your research beforehand during and after, um, there are a lot of different things. Now, also be careful when you apply for student loans, um, be sure to read the terms of the loans. There are some student loans out there that my school counselor didn't tell me what they were or my parents, how they worked and what they were. So my parents actually have student loans in their name that were for me that I cannot take over. Now, for some of you, that might not be a big deal, but you know, my parents have these loans, which shows in their credit, which means that it makes it more difficult for them to qualify for other financial things, uh, like for buying cars, houses, stuff like that, yada, yada. So you have to be really careful what loans you sign up for. Um, some loans are, are don't do that. Some loans do. So when you're signing up, like if you apply for the FAFSA, this is the free application for federal student aid. When you sign up for the FAFSA, I think you need to sign up for FAFSA for a lot of, um, financial aid assistance with grants and loans. What I'd recommend doing is you fill out your FAFSA, then call FAFSA and the school that you're looking to go to, the college you're looking to go to about the different types of student loans. Okay. Now, um, when you get federal student aid, so if, uh, student loans, um, oh, grant, I forgot about this, the Pell Grant. This, you get this through FAFSA. Okay, so when you go and you apply for student loans, um, you can have loans that they will, you have a couple different options. Okay. You can, when you sign up with a college and you get your FAFSA done and stuff, they'll have you do an institutional financial aid application. Okay. On there, you have the option to take a specific amount out the bare minimum in student loans needed to pay for school, or you can take the maximum available to you. That maximum, if you take the maximum, any money that is allotted to you as a student above and beyond the cost of school, you can get, okay, for the use of school materials, okay? Um, if you have a, a class that's not at the school, you, if you need to get a car that can help for a car or gas money, if you need to buy a laptop or books, you can use that money for that. However, it's a loan. Okay. A lot of times car loans, depending on your credit and whatnot, car loans can be really low, like a low interest rate, while student loans can be a bit higher. Okay. You don't, that money you have to pay back. So. I'm going to bold this because that's the key thing right there. This, all the loan money has to be paid back. Now, when you apply for financial aid at the school that you're going to, make sure that you talk to them and tell them, okay, 
I want to make sure that we use my scholarships and grants first before we start using student loans. You want your student loan number to be as low as possible. So keep that in mind when you're applying for student loans. Now, um, when you go and apply for a college um, and you pick your college and whatnot, they have a financial aid department. Talk to the finance department. They're, they specialize in sorting through loans and scholarships and grants and how they all apply to school. Um, so make sure that you talk to them. They will explain everything. They'll even, they're supposed to walk you through FAFSA, continuing FAFSA and stuff. So keep that in mind. Now, part of the reason why I'm going over all of this is because I keep getting calls and emails about, you know, how can you tell me about loans and grants and scholarships? Um, and, you know, what college should I go to to maximize my or minimize my school debt and maximize my school savings? So something that's going on right now in the state of California is you have the California Community College um, the California Community College Grants, essentially, if you attend a state community college such as Butte, okay, your first two years are essentially free. Okay? Um, as long as, now it's a grant, so that's as long as you abide by the rules of the grant. So you get, a certain, you get certain grades, you take certain classes, and a certain number of classes within a year. After that, it's done. So what I usually, what I try to recommend to students is if you're going to, you're considering going to college, unless you have enough scholarships and grants to pay for school to go directly to a four year, and you can either keep your loans low or no loans at all. If you're not able to do that with the loans portion, I recommend that you go to a community college because community college grant. Okay. I'll do another video um, and post it up about the uh, college progression or the, the education progression. Um, I have a visual or a graphic in the classroom um, already there, and I've explained this to a couple of you guys, um, but I will do a video that explains it more in depth. So go and check that video out, and it'll kind of talk about how to kind of take advantage of this grant and how to strategize your schooling and then career options and stuff with your schooling and stuff. But those are some of the main things that you want to pay attention to and consider when you are applying for financial aid for colleges. All right. If you have any questions, let me know. And uh, yeah, y'all have a good one. How do I get out of this? Uh-huh. Bye-bye.